Welcome back into Cougar Tracks here on KSL News Radio and KSLSports.com. Getting ready for BYU and Arizona. Kickoff going to take place 2 p.m. Saturday in Provo. Cougs and Wildcats first meeting as Big 12 foes. And to break down the Wildcats, catching up now with Jason Shear, publisher of WildcatAuthority.com. Follow him on X at Jason Shear. And Jason, excited to talk with you. No one better than uh, than you when it comes to covering the Wildcats. And so who is this Arizona team really? It feels like we've seen kind of the full range of outcomes the last few weeks from this team. Uh, that's a really good question, and I'm not sure anyone has the answer yet, including Brett Brennan. I mean, it, it really is difficult to predict which Arizona team is going to show up. Uh, there was the one against New Mexico where the offense looked uh, dynamic and the defense was terrible. Then the next game against NAU, the defense uh, is awesome. The offense disappears. Kansas State, both sides struggle. Utah, um, you know, offense is good enough that the defense really carried that game and against Texas Tech. The offense doesn't show up at all. You know, I, I think it's, it, you know, the, the most comfortable thing I could say in terms of what type of team this is. I, I think the, the offense is a, a work in progress. We'll, we'll put it like that. But the, uh, the defense has been solid and, and clearly the better side of the ball for Arizona right now. So clearly they are a perfect fit for the Big 12 because that feels like it's the description of many of the Big 12 teams in this uh, in this league. And I'm curious, just to kind of follow up on, on the Big 12 piece, what have been your thoughts of the Big 12 first year in the league? And look, you were at the center of uh, being way ahead of Arizona looking at this move to the, to the league. What's been the the feelings around Arizona fans and your thoughts on this conference thus far in, in year one? I, I think the biggest adjustment for Arizona fans has been the fact that like when, when Arizona was in the Pac-12, you, you pretty much do. There were two teams that the conference would run through most years, Utah and Oregon. And then, you know, you'd have a USC or Washington compete. Um, and then the rest was, was kind of open. Uh, this this year in the Big 12, who knows, right? Like, you have so many teams that could win this conference, and every week any team could beat any team, and it's it's been pretty wild to follow. I mean, just look at Arizona. You know, they beat Utah, then they go home and lose to Texas Tech, and Texas Tech is a is a very good team, but, um, you know, going to Utah and winning there obviously isn't an easy task, and it's kind of like, you know, who knows what will happen this Saturday, and um, there's no clear favorites, it feels like, in any of these games being played, and, and you, you know, from one to sixteen, it, it feels like anyone can beat anyone, and, and I think people are, including myself, have to kind of get adjusted to that fact. Talking with Jason Shear, part of WildcatAuthority.com publisher, part of the twenty four seven Sports Network. You noted that Texas Tech lost seven red zone trips for Arizona, but only one touchdown. What do you kind of chalk up as is the issues for the offense against Texas Tech a week ago for Arizona? It just feels like the no one's really on the same page. And, and after the game, Brent Brennan, uh, basically, I mean, that basically he said that guys on, were running the wrong way. And I asked him, I asked him on Monday when you said guys are running the wrong way, who were you referring to? And he said everybody. Uh, linemen are are pulling the wrong way. Receivers are running the wrong routes. And so he said maybe we have to simplify this offense. But um, whatever it is, it, it's just not working. Like, guys just aren't on the same page. Bill Fafita doesn't look anything like he did last season. Uh, they did a nice job coming out of the bye week, and, and kind of uh, the offense looked pretty good against Utah, and then they took a, a major step back. They were on Texas you know, Tech's side of the field 13 times and, and came away with one touchdown and, and a few field goals. And um, it's just it's it's not acceptable. I mean, had they converted even a few more of those, this game isn't close. And, uh, they dominated time of possession. They finished with more yardage in the air and on the ground. Uh, they played a better statistical game, but uh, turnovers, you know, were a factor, and they really hadn't been, uh, you know, that much this season. And uh, the offense just wasn't gelling and didn't seem to be on the right page. And uh, the goal now is to, to see how much of that they can fix before Saturday against BYU. What have been your impressions of, of Ted Aroa McMillan? Uh, you know, his stats-wise looks looks great. He had that huge game in week one, but – What's been your thoughts on him? Is he part of these maybe not running the right way, or is he kind of the exception here? He's kind of the exception. I, I think we're finding out that, that one of the most valuable players on the team last year was, was wide receiver Jacob Cowing, and he's on the 49ers now in the NFL. And teams couldn't guard T-Mac last season like they're guarding him this season. 
Uh, they're putting a safety over the top. They got the corner. He's basically being double teamed on every single route he runs. Last year, you couldn't do it because Jacob Cowling would go underneath and, and just kill opposing teams. And um, I think T-Mac's being hurt by the fact that no other wide receiver has stepped up. Uh, the, the rest of the receiving core ha- has been disappointing after actually looking pretty good during fall camp. Uh, you know, I think the second leading receiver on the team is, is the running back. And last year, they had Jacob Cowing and Tanner McLaughlin, who's a tight end, who's in the NFL. And um, they had NFL caliber players on the offense, and they haven't come close to replacing that. And so T-Mac has put up yardage, but the touchdown numbers aren't there because really every opposing defense that Arizona has faced has said, look, we're going to do everything we can to take away T-Mac and, you know, force other receivers to step up, and, and they really haven't so far. Since you've been covering Arizona sports, how many how many years now have you been covering Arizona? I'm curious. Uh, about 20 years. Where does uh, McMill and T-Mac stack up among some of the great players that you've seen over the last 20 years at Arizona? Yeah, I, I would say he's definitely top five, if yeah. not like top three. You know, I, I think in terms of natural, you know, God-given ability, he's number one. I have never seen – anything like it, you know, production wise, he's taken a little bit of a step back this year, uh, but he's a surefire first round draft pick. He's really, really good. Um, you know, it, you're always going to have guys that, you know, go back to Teddy Bruschi, Chris McAllister at corner was really, really good. But in terms of natural talent, I, I haven't seen anyone better than uh, that. Well, and, and you, cause I, I bring that up just because I, I think of some of those, those matchups, it feels like I've seen kind of, you know, Arizona football has had these moments where, B, where they play BYU. I remember that 06 game where it was with Stoops, Willie Tui, Tama, and they felt like Arizona was kind of on the climb, but they, they didn't really break through yet. I, I felt like this was going to be a real breakthrough year for Arizona. I kind of get a little bit leery still of, of the possibilities for BYU in this matchup because Arizona is more than capable if that talent shows up because McMillan and Fafita, when they're on, they, they can be great. Yeah, and, and I think that's that's key. Like this team, that, and I think that's a lot of the frustration too. Is this team seems right on the edge of being good, right? Like the defense has exceeded expectations, and the offensive talent is there. Like uh, no one believes that Noah Fafita just all of a sudden can't play football, or Team Matt can't get open. It's just a matter of you know the the offensive line hasn't been healthy all year. It, it really has. There has been one game where it's been healthy. Even last game, you know, Arizona has started a different offensive line every single game this season. Um, and, and so that's been frustrating. And it, it feels like Arizona's right on the edge. And, and maybe they're one of these you know, breakout games away offensively. But it just hasn't happened yet. But the talent, for the most part, is, is capable of making that happen. Well, and the secondary really stood out in that Utah game, that, that upset win in Salt Lake. But you've even reported that, Stokes, who got banged up in that Utah game, and Maldonado, they could be out for the year. What does the, maybe the secondary, that safety spot, look like going forward for Arizona? Yeah, Stokes is, is out for the year. He's probably going to redshirt because of that injury in the Utah game. Uh, Gunnar Maldonado, they, Arizona doesn't announce injuries, but um, he's out this weekend at the very least, and, and the early indications are it's a pretty serious knee injury. Uh, Genesis Smith, who, who played really well in that Utah game and, and, and is a very good player, will likely move to where um, where Gunnar Maldonado is at safety. I don't think there's much of a drop-off. I, I think a lot of, of Genesis Smith. Uh, Owen Goss, who's a Colgate transfer, will go where Stutes was. That, to me, is a big drop-off. I think Stutes is you know, basically the perfect nickel for this Arizona defense. Um, Goss has experience, but he struggled at times. He played well against Texas Tech, but he's just not as good as Stutes. And, um, now you're talking about depth at that point where if Goss gets hurt or isn't playing well, there's very, very few options to turn to. So um, losing Stukes and Maldonado is a, a very big hit for this defense. Jason, I'm curious, what do you, how do you, I mean, maybe it's hard to gauge because these teams haven't played annually BYU and Arizona, but there's been a few moments enough, it's, you know, over the last, you know, 20 years, uh, you know, between when BYU had Bronco Mendenhall and then this is the fourth meeting since Kalani Satake has been the head coach. What do Arizona fans think of being in a league again with BYU and and maybe the possibilities of this, you know, turning into something, you know, somewhat regularly in, in the Big 12 and maybe the, the, the thoughts on just the, this matchup being a, a regional thing for these two programs. Yeah, I mean, I you know obviously the the rival is Arizona, but everyone you know that's new to the conference is kind of wondering who that second rival will be, and I, and I think BYU is probably a good fit for that. 
because there is a history. Um, you know, the Vegas Bowl, they played in Allegiant Stadium a few years ago, and um, they've had some very, very good football games. And I think there's definitely a healthy respect there for Arizona fans. You know, it's funny, you could always tell what schools Arizona fans really dislike, and, and BYU is not one of them. Like, it's kind of a, a healthy respect, and, and they're playing well this year. But, yeah, I mean, I, I don't see why it can't turn into that that second team type of deal because there's been so many good games played between the two. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, BYU, Arizona in the Big 12. And I uh, look forward to seeing you in the press box in, in Provo. Uh, definitely recommend getting the Cougar Tell. you got to try it. It's it, it's good. It's worth it. And then uh, have some, uh, looking forward to seeing your coverage at wildcatauthority.com. Publisher, Jason Shear, part of the 24-7 Sports Network. Jason, always appreciate it and uh, hope to talk again in basketball season. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to Saturday. Thank you.